Welcome to Determined Succeed. I'm your host, Dawn Malarney, also known as the Unique Connector. I have someone here today that I'm so excited to have join me. She's one that I've never met in person, but we've had this instant friendship energy. And I just love her because she is one that really has brought the beauty out of myself, but also to take action and to just be that friend that is across the state or well down to Chicago away from me. And she's been something that I just needed in my life. So I will let you introduce yourself, my dear. So thank you for joining me. Thank you for the invitation, my dear Dawn. It is such a pleasure and a joy to be here talking to you. I am so honored. First time we met, you told me you wanted to do this. And like when that message, I promise you when it popped up in my inbox, it gave me all the warm and fuzzies that number one, you're doing this, which is great. And number two, that you invited little old me. So mm. oh, Not my little old you. Okay. <laughs> so my name is Mika. And if you're looking for me on the interwebs, which I hope you do, you can find me at spidermika.com. I am the spider. I am a portrait photographer. But honestly, lately, I've been describing myself as a heart surgeon that just happens to use a camera as a scalpel. Mm -hmm. I work in a very transformative atmosphere. Um, we'll, we'll probably do some name dropping and other things later as you get to asking questions, I know. But um, I just wanna set the stage for the reason I feel like what I do is very transformational and different than just sit and cheese and pose and whatever, like that is totally not what I do. My place of comfort and being for you is to bring you out of a space of absolutely hating taking photographs because let's face it most people do mm -hmm. um, we all have our histories we all have our stories I come from a very non-judgmental place people tell me everything it's very therapeutic to get it off your chest <gasps> and at the end of the day after working with me I really do shift the lens pun intended and I help you view yourself differently, love the results, and have a different way of thinking about yourself and what it means to show up, whether the camera is there or not. Mm. And that's where I could just feel your energy through the screen that you do hold such a safe space. And this is where I feel like we've we're kind of two very similar ladies where we love to hold space for people where they can show up as themselves and have that inner beauty shine. And, and I even remember the day I met you where you were just like, yeah, a lot of my sessions, there's a lot of crying or tears, <laughs> but I, you know, I coach them and I'm bringing out their essence. And, you know, I think that's, what's so interesting of how you even portray yourself to everybody else and that you aren't just a photographer, you're going deep. And so I think that's the interesting part of always learning everybody's journey and kind of understanding what was that little, like maybe pivotal moment or the things that really helped you align to what you're doing now. Cause you have not been a photographer forever. And so, yeah. <laughs> so that's why I think it's so interesting and in how, we find passions that we're really intrigued by and how we can bring different skills and strengths to really make a difference with people. You, you're talking my language. I always say this. I, I didn't, I have to credit the person that said this out loud. Um, I love when she said this, it just made a profound impact on me. She said that we're more than our business cards, right? Mm -hmm. And just that simple statement alone it's, it totally wraps up everything that you just said about us. You know, I, I haven't been a photographer my whole life. You know, I didn't, I didn't come out of the womb with a camera, so to speak, right? This is my eighth year of being in business as an entrepreneur. Yay, I survived Yay. All, the, all the things. And when I started, I, I knew exactly what I wanted to do and what I wanted to become getting there, well, let's face it, I'm nowhere even close to where I envisioned myself eventually being, but I had a goal and I had an intense focus and that has not shifted since the beginning. So every day I get up, 
I am continuously working toward this vision that I originally had for myself. The, the evolution comes in where, you know, as far as manifesting, if you believe in that, or, you know, just setting goals in general, you, you, you kind of get coached and advised to set the goal, but don't necessarily worry about the how, right? Mm -hmm. That's where the evolution comes in because my how has changed a lot over the years. I've gotten more confidence in one area. I've gotten, I've lost patience in other areas. I've perfected, you know, processes in other areas, other things. I have no idea what I'm doing and it's still yet to be seen. So all the how, that's where that beauty and evolution comes through. But where I want to be and who I want to, the kind of mark, the legacy that I want to leave behind is still very much, you know, there and present and hasn't really shifted. Mm. Well, I love that how you use the word evolution, because I think so many of us think like, if I'm going to do this step, then it's going to look like this and it's going to keep going on and on and on instead of forgetting about the evolution and the veering towards the left or the right, or, you know, you had to have this experience over here, which maybe wasn't always most enjoyable, but it would have never have brought you over here to the other side. And so that's why I think with you just two of just your journey and the things that you've seen, you wouldn't have probably led you down this road of where you are now. And that's where, you know, let's even go back to the younger Mika and just think about, you know, the confidence and the inner energy that you had, who would ever thought you'd be where you are now? And I think some of the risks that you've taken and taking certain roles, and that's where I guess, you know, you can get into details of even the roles that you've been in have really led you down this road that you probably didn't really know was going to evolve to where it is now. Oh my gosh, not a clue. There, there was not a single point in my, my early Mika days that I even considered photography as a thing. I mean, we all know Ansel Adams. We all, you know, the landscape black and white photographer. We all know Ann Gettys with the babies and the bumblebees, that kind of thing. And we all know Annie Leibovitz, you know, celebrity rock star, um, you know, photographer extraordinaire, no mess, mm -hmm. no nonsense. But as far as me ever thinking that it was a, even a career choice. No, never. Um, let, let, let's go back to tiny yeah, let's baby Mika. <laughs> you know how, you know, we ask kids, yeah, what do you want to do when you grow up? I honestly never really had an answer. You know, uh, I kind of always thought conceptually, even without realizing it when I was a kid, so I never really landed on, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. I always said, I want to make things beautiful yeah. and I want to make people happy. Mm. And I had no idea that those concepts would lead me on the journey that I took, right? Just there, there was a lot of, um, I, I don't really want to say sadness, but being an observer and a lover of humanity, like I love humans, I just do. I love, I love us. I love that we have this spectrum of emotions and feelings. I love that there have been billions and trillions and quaternions of us on the planet and none of us have ever been the same. I think that is so profoundly beautiful and deep. It, it gives me chills every time it, I, I think about that. And, and, respecting and being an observer of the human experience. Like I said, I, you know, I had a, I had a very normal childhood. There were ups, there were downs, just like most people. It was, it was average, you know, um, but, but I remember hurting a lot when I saw the, the, the downs, the bad, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then I also remember just kind of this feeling that the happy moments were so fleeting. You know, mm -hmm. it's so easy to remember the sad times, the bad times, the rough times, but we have to try, or at least I felt back then that we had to try, give effort to remembering the good times, you know, uh, the feeling of being happy. 
and how it, you know, just kind of slipped through your fingertips. You hold on to it for a little bit and then it's like water, it passes through. And then we're back to either uh, regular everyday meh kind of life or here's another problem, here's another disparity that we have to go yeah. through. And, and so that's why I felt like, you know, whenever I grew up, what did I want to do? I, I wanted to keep this, I wanted to keep, I wanted to hold the water. <laughs> I wanted us, I wanted to be someone who could help other people hold that water, hold that happiness for just a little bit longer. And so, you know, my, my journey took me through, I, I feel like I've always been a designer, a creative. I come from a very creative family. I've got five sisters. My mom was creative. My dad was creative. My dad loved history, reading. My mom was such a matriarch in our community. Everybody loved her. She had six girls, you know, so I think people thought she knew a thing or two about raising kids and and, <laughs> and being a mom and, you know, what do you, how do you do all these things and still be a creative person, Ms. Simmons? And so I learned a lot from my mom. We actually had a dark room in our basement. That, so I, I grew up on film without, again, realizing that this would be my future, right? Yeah. My mother actually wanted to do what I'm doing right now, but she never got to that point. It was more of a hobby for her. Mm -hmm. And so I, I learned aperture and, you know, shutter speed and all those technical terms and what it smelled like to have chemical developments, you know, around me. And so I had a, a very deep appreciation for that. And then computers came on the scene. You know, yeah. I'm in school, 1984, Apple Macs ran the, were in the classroom and I was in, I'm sorry, Don, I have to say it. I was in, I was in the gifted program. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey. So, <laughs> so I was like one out of eight kids out of the whole school to be chosen to stay after school and learn how to use Mac computers. So I was bitten by the, you know, the Apple bug and, you know, the design world right away. And so I kind of felt like all of my life, you know, at age eight starting, that was kind of my direction. I'm going to go into something creative. I'm going to be a designer, you know, that kind of world. And, and so I did, I went to college and I, I've got an advertising and visual communications degree. And what is visual communications? It's graphic design, it's web design, it's fashion design, it's design, 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 design design, design, design. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so that's my world, composition, color, all the, all that kind of thing, texture. So branding, there you go, is my background. That's, that's why, one of the reasons we'll, we'll get into that. Um, so, so now I knew, now I have this degree. Now I'm a brander. What do I do with my life? Well, I thought I was going to do web design for people. That was one of the things that, I, you know, an avenue that I took up, but I quickly discovered when people don't know what they know, or rather when people don't know what they want, it's really easy for them to say, well, I don't want this and I don't want that. And I got real tired of that really quickly. Well, what is it that you do want? And all they wanted to do was tell me what they didn't want. And so, yep. <laughs> so God bless web designers. That was not me. <laughs> that was not a world that I fit into. And then, and then I'm also a writer, you know, uh, just loving the English language. I'm sorry, you know, non-native English speakers, English is a really, really difficult language to learn. We've got at least three base structures that we're working with. And then we like to make up things, you know, yeah. <laughs> but I, I love the English, English language. I love that there is a very specific word and term for everything that we go through, our emotions, the, just the onion layers and levels of perception and observation and, and ways of communicating that is beautiful to me and I know how to use a comma and a semicolon and a dash and you know just that kind of thing right mm -hmm. so so here's where my journey took me so I'm I'm you know finishing up college I thought I was going to do web design I was teaching photoshop and teaching illustrator off to the side I was teaching children theater and music and oh. playwriting I was doing so many things I was in a band that I did not do this on purpose. I promise there's a guitar behind my head. I promise that I didn't plan that. I did so many things um, creative wise, right? Yeah. And, and that, then I got tired. I said, you know what? I, I was around 23, 24. And I said, I, I, need, a, I need a real <laughs> career trajectory. And so I remember for, it was three months. 
every single Monday, I sent out exactly 10 resumes. Five were for the writing field. Mm -hmm. You know, um, am I going to write children's books? Am I going to be an editor for a magazine, newspaper, that kind of thing? Am I going to teach? That was the writing world. And then I sent out five. The other five were for the design, computer, advertising kind of field. And so every Monday for three straight months, that's what I did. Long story short, I got hired at Harpel Studios to work for Oprah Winfrey. Mm -hmm. And so in January of 2007, I walked into Harpel Studios as an employee. And therein lies where your question <laughs> really holds heavy, right? Um, seemingly all these random things were happening to me. I just gave you a partial list of the things that I had been doing. And then all of a sudden I walked into Harpo. And so it was her design um, department that I was part of. So we, we were the graphics. So the things that flew across the screen, all the lower thirds and the way her stage looked and all those design elements, as far as the prints work, you know, that, that was us. Um, I have people that I call brothers and sisters right now, the team that I I worked with they you know we were together more than we were at our own homes and with our own family so they are family to me right now even these many years later you know wow. um, I, and I sure a lot of people resonate with that right mm -hmm. <clears throat> so being there one of the first things that I did it's like you know I'm in a room full of 15 people who are doing motion graphics something that I had never done before but again design I know composition I know movement I know color you know it was easy to, for me to learn how to make those 2d images now become three-dimensional and move and things like that so there was a learning curve I learned that but let me tell you what I also knew that nobody could teach me at the moment 10 years before I had got to Oprah I had been a very proficient skin and face retoucher so that, you know, most people know that that term Photoshopping. So I don't know how life happens. When mm -hmm. I was in college learning Photoshop, I, I honestly don't remember what happened, but for somehow the universe just planted out that people started coming to me because they knew I was really good with skin retouching, getting rid of blemishes and scars and things. And so I was at Columbia right here in Chicago, very proficient art school. And so there were actors there, there were singers there, there were um, models there. And they were, they were coming to me and saying, I've got this skin thing. I got these really great photos from a photographer, but can you please help me out? And I did. And so I had a 10 year portfolio already of experience before I got to Oprah. So guess what I did when I walked through those doors in January, 2007, I was like, okay, who's retouching Oprah? Cause now that's my job. <laughs> <laughs> and within two weeks, it was retouching Oprah. It was great. And it wasn't just Oprah, right? Who does Oprah hang out with? Everybody. So, you know, since 2007, think of a person, a celebrity, and you know, any everybody from Barbara Streisand to Jennifer Lawrence, um, who, by the way, FYI, is, is very against skin retouching. But it, you know, it, and and I, I just got to make it clear. Most of the time, the celebrities didn't even know what was going on, right? They they're off doing their celebrity things, actory things, world activist things. But it's the producers, it's their agents, it's their you know people behind the scenes that are requesting these things, right? And so I, I, I was gonna say I became quickly known as, but that's not exactly true. Oprah did not know me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she could not pick me out of a lineup right now. Um, but what she did know, she knew Chicago because she was in New York, she was in LA, she was in Africa, she was doing all these things all over the world. But she knew that if she needed great work done on her images, it needed to go to Chicago. What she didn't know was that Chicago was me. Yeah. And so I ended up doing the bulk, 80, 90% of images, wherever Oprah was, they, the, the photos came to me to do all the things, you know, and, and we know we're, it's 2023. We've all, we've been through that, um, 
the knowledge base of what retouching is. You know, now we've got blur filters, right? Come on. <laughs> we've got, um, you know, and, and I'm just going to say it like this. They're, they're, this was before Snapchat. This was before blur filters. This was hand done, right? It, it's like, think of Caravaggio and Michelangelo with painting. I was yeah. a painter. This, this was my skill set. This was my craft. Don, I was excellent at it. Mm, excellent. But it was making me severely depressed. Yeah. Why? Why would anyone get depressed working for Oprah Winfrey? Let me tell you why. Because every day, my job was to take these very normal, beautiful human beings and completely change the way they looked because it didn't stop at, you know, let's get rid of this blemish, let's get rid of this shadow. It became, let's manipulate this person to an unrecognizable state. And then this is what goes out into the public. And who's the public? The public is me, the public is you, the public is your children, the public is your parents, your aunt, your sister, your brother, your dad, your bestie. Mm -hmm. everybody's seeing these images that have been retouched by Nika, by Chicago, Oprah Chicago. And they're, they're flipped. This was again before Instagram. So we're flipping physical pages of magazines, books, newspapers, and we're seeing these images of quote unquote perfection. And then we're, then we go look in the mirror and we see reality. We see naturalness after we've just seen these page after page after page of perfect skin, perfect hair, not a single wrinkle in their clothes. And what does that do to your self-esteem? What does that do to you looking in the mirror? You start to feel really bad about yourself. Subconsciously on these, this little drip of subtleties, right? I don't look like that. So there must be something wrong. Mm -hmm with me mm -hmm. and so because I knew that this was my job I was perpetuating this this beauty myth it was making me really sad mm. so the next part of my journey came which was how do I stop being really sad about what I do how do you take this place of work grateful to be at this place everybody wants to work at you know you, you can't go anywhere in the entire world and say Oprah and nobody knows you know mm -hmm. who her name is so I'm so I'm in this place I'm doing great work how do you how do you say that you're sad about that how do you come away from that and so I did this exercise I don't know, again, don't know where it came from, but I just, I needed to feel joy again. So part one of the exercise that I made myself do, I needed to remember what made me feel good, what, remember things that brought me happiness, brought me joy, you know, that water that was so fleeting that I talked about. But joy is, joy is permanent, right? Joy, joy lives inside you. Happiness is water, it's fleeting, joy lives inside. Can't, no one can take it away. And I hadn't thought about what brought me joy in so long. And so just making a, a simple list of what brought me joy was the best thing that I could have done for myself because it led to another exercise and another exercise. And it was on a Friday, I started this. By Monday morning, I went back to work and I had joy in my heart again. I wasn't depressed anymore. It literally took the weekend for me to come out of a pit of despair. There were other things happening in my life that made me depressed. You know, I'm not going to blame it on just for the record. It wasn't just Harpo. You know, I was my late twenties, early thirties. Everybody goes through this, but I, I honestly went back to work on Monday morning with joy because now I had a purpose, a purpose. I, I, I should say this, <laughs> what I, what I discovered was was my joy and the thing that I needed to do was not fix anybody anymore or or allow people to even think that they needed to be fixed. And instead, I found 
portrait photography. I knew that I wanted to do portraits after doing that exercise because then I could coach, teach, mentor, help, show people that they were enough in their own form. I and you can I hear myself in the tone of my voice when I started saying these words. This this is my grounding. I am like an oak tree with roots in the ground when I talk about this because I've been I I I feel oh my gosh I just I could shake a tree right now just because I you know it's like well, credibility and 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 what what gives you the right to say these things, Mika? Everybody has low self-esteem. It's very normal. And I talk about these things the way that I do with all this passion and this oomph because I've been there. I've been in the celebrity world. That is our status of, you know, making it. We all feel like, you know, you're making multi-million dollars. You made it. You've got no worries in the world, right? You've got everything at your fingertips. And I am here to say, because I've seen one after one after one after one and again and celebrities walk through those hallways there is nothing better than simply loving who you are right now today in this space you are the most powerful being that you can be once you realize that you do not need anything else but who you are to succeed everything that we think we want we already have everything that we want to be we already are Don, when I did that, that exercise, it was amazing to me because there were so many, like I said, random things that happened to me in my life. But doing that exercise, honestly, and I, I, I keep saying this, but I love it. It is so the truth. All the random things suddenly became these perfectly shaped puzzle pieces that fit inside each other. And it showed me in that moment, all the things that had happened to me led me to that point. Mm. I don't even know what words to even have after that. There is so, so much words of wisdom in there and, and so many things that I didn't know about even your journey and how it led you on this beautiful path. And I think it's just an amazing, wonderful reminder to even myself, because I think we are so critical on ourselves and we nitpick everything. And the joy in life that we don't realize or take for granted sometimes. And we're always trying to look for outside and trying to find what's next. You really summed it up well earlier about just how we don't celebrate the happiness or celebrate all the things that are filling our cup of joy. And I think of peace and the purpose of why we're even here. You know, I just think of all those things. And this is where two was, I'm like John, a couple notes where it's just your journey is so interesting of just too how you even had two different resumes, you know, and I feel like that's even two where it's like, you thought these were the two different paths, but look mm -hmm. at how it evolved and look at where the opportunity and look at the opportunity for you to go and experience that meet these people that so many of us look up to or that think we need to be like them in order to be something and then we're covering up what we should be and showing up as ourselves and so I hope the listeners really listen to your story and even re-listen to it because I think you had so many words of wisdom and I even giggled to myself of one day someone asked me who would you love to interview if you had an opportunity to interview anybody in the world? And I said, Oprah. And I think it's just because, you know, that's everybody knows Oprah, but deep down it was you, it, you are the one, you know? <laughs> and this is where I think too, where I'm like, there are reasons we met. And I think I needed to hear it. I needed to hear your journey. I need to hear the reasons why you do what you do because we all need to show up as ourselves and we need to find what's great about us and to shine brighter. I mean, that's too deep down why I wanted to do this podcast was to shine on everybody and to make them realize they're amazing. Keep going. Don't give up. Don't let people hold you back. Yeah. I, maybe there, there's something in there. I, I think the more you say that, Donna, I feel like the person that 
that you need to interview most and best is probably yourself. <laughs> you're you're going to be your greatest star. <laughs> well, I know. And I've been when I was sitting here and, and thinking and hearing your story. And I was just, you know, even thinking of myself and, you know, this is why mm -hmm. I had eating problems growing up, you know, or why I've been so critical and mean and can't take compliments well. And this time in my life, to be honest, is the healthiest I feel like I've ever been. And I think it's yeah. because I'm just doing me. Because you're doing you. Oh my gosh. They're so, okay. Um, this, you know about me. When we first met, you know, I kind of let you know, oh, I'm doing something new and terrifying too, Dawn. I'm going to add <laughs> professional speaking to my resume. And so you've already connected me with some great people. I love you so much for that. Um, the thing that <laughs> the thing one of the things that I will really excite me to talk about and share with people is is what I call a joy and a grief meter mm, I like that tell me more and absolutely buckle your seat hold on to your butts mm -hmm. the joy and the grief meter we all have it but we don't always pay attention to it right um, and a lot of people will feel and argue, and I know this because it's, it's happening already. You know, uh, it's happened already. I'll tell, I'll tell friends this before I actually called it the joy and grief meter. I'll explain this concept to friends and they'll be like, well, I got kids, Mika, I got spouse, Mika, or, you know, I got blah, 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 X, Y, Z to take care of. I can't think about myself all the time. So I have to be clear, this, this is not a, 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 a method to become selfish. Mm. It is simply a method to, and you know what? It's not even simple. It is, here, here's what it is. Here's the joy and grief meter. Essentially, being a human is hard, right? Mm -hmm. We've, you know, we've, we've kind of said it earlier. There's a spectrum of emotions, a spectrum of responsibility. Not all of us can go through life and only choose the things that bring us happiness, right? Very few people who alive on this planet have been able to do that. Yeah. So we've got some, <laughs> you're like, yeah. So we've got some unavoidable things that we have to deal with, people to encounter, bills to pay, troubles in our lives, sicknesses, illness, death, you know, crappy neighbor, whatever. The joy and grief meter is when you're about to engage in something. What is it about the situation that you can find joy in? Mm. When you're faced with a decision, if you've got three choices in front of you and you're unsure which one to do, because let's face it, our hearts fight with our brain and our logic, our logic and our brain fight with our gut instincts right? Mm -hmm. We're consistently fighting with ourselves. What does my gut say? What does my heart say? What does my mind say? And so the joy and grief meter is really looking at your situation and saying to yourself, I have to make a conscious decision to do the thing that brings me joy. Why do we do this? Instead of the thing that brings me grief, don't, you know, we, we talk about this in, in a lot of different ways. People, people, uh, especially women, right? We have this conversation a lot. I say yes all the time. And then I regret it because now I'm um, looking at <laughs> look your face. Yeah. You're like, I know this was like, um, <laughs> but now my day is spread too thin. I'm exhausted. I haven't, you know, done anything for myself and I'm drained because I keep helping, nurturing, assisting everybody else who asks for it, but I don't say yes to myself. And why do we feel that way? Because it's selfish, right? And so yeah. lots of conversations around that. The joy and grief meter, it's not necessarily, like I said, you know, oh, I can't just choose what I want to do all the time. I've got responsibilities. That's not it. Do the things that bring you joy. Stay away from the things that bring you grief. Okay. Grief versus joy. Those are huge differences. If it's going to bring you grief later and you know it, try your best to stay away from it. If it's a situation that you cannot avoid because you are actually in a position where you have to do this responsibility, take care of someone else, pay this bill, 
that's where the joy and grief meter also come in, comes into play because now you've done this thing that drains you and you feel it, your energy is gone. Keep your list next to you of the things that bring you joy. Mm. Fill yourself back up. Mm. And find ways when you're engaging in those unpleasant things to make the experience that much better for you. Do you have to do it at a certain time of day? because you're going to feel better doing it? Do you have to talk to a certain person involved versus the other person who does not bring me joy? There are always going to be options. Always, always, always. And it's up to you to consciously and very intentionally choose those micro options that make the experience just a little bit less painful a little bit less grievous so that while you're doing it, you're not completely drained, completely at a loss and you continue to build yourself up and have energy to do other things like choose yourself at the end of the day. Mm. Well, I love how you're, how you have the meter and, and this kind of too reminds me of another friend who I know well, who really focuses on joy also. And I remember her saying how her family, even as an example, they have a joy calendar where they try and make Ooh. joyful things with their family. And she said, even the most silliest things, like we're going to have a dance party folding or like folding laundry and matching socks. <laughs> like she tries to bring joy in every little thing, but to its life, we can't avoid it all. But how can we keep reminding ourselves? And I almost think of it too, like earlier that you were saying about, we always focus on the negative. How can we focus on the happiness things? And I think sometimes I'm not the best at it, but I need to get better at it where yeah. I need to write down all those happy moments. You know, I, a gratitude journal, my husband gave me once and it just made me like, this is really helpful. But like, I think sometimes just listing out those happy moments, those things that bring you joy, mm -hmm. because those days when you're kind of having a low, look back at it. Cause you forget about all of the things you've maybe accomplished, maybe the things you've done, the impact you've made on other people, the inspiration. Yeah. And sometimes you can, it will create more ideas in your brain of how you can keep getting inspired to bring that joy to yourself. Yes, I love that. It is a source of constant inspiration. And then, the, you know, just like anything else, it becomes a practice, it becomes a habit. And so you find yourself inserting little spurts of joy in your really crappy day right? Mm -hmm. You find a moment to go for a walk. You, you're in your car, you're in traffic. All right. So you're going to be late for your thing. We got voice messages now. You can, hey, Siri, tell so-and-so I'm going to be 15 minutes late and then roll down the window, crank up your music and enjoy yeah. the rest of the ride. <laughs> Instead of being so flustered and being mad about it, enjoy it. Mm -hmm. How can you be curious about it? I giggle because um, a couple months ago, we went to Colorado as a family. We always do it. And we were snowboarding. And I was like, oh, I'm ready for the day. You know, I'll meet you guys down at the bottom. Well, silly Dawn took the wrong turn, wasn't paying attention, ended up on the <laughs> wrong side. And so at first, my instinct was like, you are an idiot. How did this happen? You know, look at what you just did, you know, and then in the moment of finally getting on that gondola, getting over to the other side and snowboarding longer, I kept reminding myself, what did you just learn from this? Where's the beauty in this? And so I got like a moment to myself to ride up in the gondola, to look at the beauty, look at the mountains and have a run by myself. And I was like, look at, look what came <laughs> out of that. Even though it was like, you totally went snowboarding much longer. You were tired, but like, I was enjoying it. And I think that's just a reminder to us all of like, not every moment's going to be great, but how can you find the gift in it? There it is. There it is. Mm. Mm. There well, it is. We. Oh, sorry. What were you going to say? Tell me more. I, I was just, I was just going to remind me and you and every, you know, everybody else, it, it it's it's kind of a bummer that we have to 
intentionally remind ourselves that we're awesome. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but in the same breath, this is where we are. So we got to keep doing it, right? It's yeah. it's that thing. It's tough, but it's constant and you're worth it. You're worth it. Find the mm. joy. Absolutely. Mm. There's joy in the journey. There is joy in the journey. And this is why too, I'm like, there's reasons why I met you and you bring joy to me and your energy. So I'm so thankful you were on the show. And this is where too, I know you're looking to do more speaking, but you're also traveling and doing tours. So tell more to the <laughs> listeners of maybe where they can find you or even meet up with you and where I hope one day you'll be coming to my area or I just need to come down to Chicago to visit you. <laughs> Both are definitely on the table. So yes, thanks for asking. Um, so I said earlier, spidermika.com is, it's my place. It's my home. It's my online living room. Come visit me. And if you are interested in knowing where I'm going to be for the rest of the year-ish until I guess November, I, I am doing a tour this year. You know, we, we made it through the pandemic, thank God, you know, and they're uh, just kind of presented this opportunity to travel. It's one of the things that I've always wanted to do being a business owner. I mean, that's seriously, let's lay it out. The reason we go into business is so that we can do whatever the F we want to. Yep, yep. So, I mean, we all say, I want to travel more. So, of course, let's find an excuse to travel. And so traveling has always been on my, you know, to-do list. Pandemic happened, kind of pushed me back. But, hey, we're here now. And so because of Zoom just exploding for the last two, three years, I've met some incredible people across the country, across the world. And so I decided, um, because so many people were like, oh my gosh, Mika, I love you. I wish you were in my city. And so I said, well, um, I, I guess I'll be in your city. <laughs> I, I guess I gotta go. Yeah. So I, I was in San Francisco last month. Yay, San Francisco. I had a wonderful time. In seven days, I'll be in the great city of Seattle. I'm very excited to visit Seattle. Next month, I'll be in San Diego. Mm. After that, I'll be Asheville, North Carolina. And to close out the tour, no, actually, then we're in uh, Isla Mujeres, Mexico. Oof. That's going to be fun from my birthday. <laughs> uh huh. And then to close out the tour in November, nope, October, end of October, I'll be in Denver, Colorado. Oof. And so, oh my gosh. So if you go to spidermika.com, you can do slash tour 2023 and you can see all those spaces and learn if you're interested how to actually work with me and get some amazing portraits for yourself or for your business. Mm, well, I'm so proud of you. And I love how to you're being creative to show your greatness and to travel and to experience it, but also remind everybody how beautiful they are. And that's where... I think anyone that gets a session with you is so lucky to show up, to be themselves and for you to capture those moments. So keep shining bright. I'm so thankful we met. I'm so glad you're a text away and <laughs> That's right. I want everybody to follow you. And too, I hope that they can get some inspiration from this conversation and to keep bringing joy to their life and to know too, like, look at the, her journey. No journey looks the same. We are all different individuals and we can't plan for how it's going to go. But I just love that you were so determined. So thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate you. Thank you, John. Spider Mika everywhere. LinkedIn, Instagram. Be beauty happens when we love who we are. And Don, you are so adorable. And I love you as a person. Mm -hmm. Thanks for having me. So happy to be here. Mm, well, thank you, my dear. And thank you to our listeners. Bye. <laughs>